All right. Hello, everyone. And welcome back to some more League of Legends going into Champ Select of this next game in Group A. On the blue side, we now have Team Sirachi Seraph on the blue side. And then we have Team Yatoski. Yatosuki. I'm going to be saying it two different ways throughout the entire game and throughout the rest of the night. But here we are going into this game. First bands going out. Looks like these are more targeted bands. These are definitely different picks from last game. Uh, bands, as far as I am aware, from Srirachi Seraph. Except for that, maybe that Ari band. Um, that Ari was banned the last game. So, But this might... We'll see if the rank difference... There are a bunch of plats, diamonds, and even a masters on Team Srirachi Seraph. Or are there unranked and golden plats and a diamond, I believe, on the side of Team Yatoski. <clears throat> yeah, it looks like mostly just target ban so far. Lux not necessarily a top tier pick. Um, same with Yumi. Yumi not necessarily so high unless they expect to be playing the uh, Zeri or a champion of that matter, maybe even a Lucian. But um, yeah, it's going to be relatively standard bans right now. And if there, anyone's in chat, feel free to chat it up with me while the game starts for the champion select. And hopefully nothing bugs out as it did earlier. Feel free to discuss champions with me. Oh, it looks like Satame is going to pick the Fiddlesticks first pick again. That was the same first pick as last game. And the Jin first pick going out for... Yatsuki, along with the Aatrox, two very strong laners, Jin and Aatrox, most, more often than not, playing more aggressively pushed up in the lane. But Finding Sunshine gets the Neela pick that was banned away from them last game. Now I'm excited. Neela, a champion you don't see often anywhere in League of Legends, not necessarily known for it, and the Pike once again, Rosetrox. Again, We'll, we will probably be seeing that Empyrean Pike skin once more. So it's going to be very interesting to see that Pike once again, just throwing himself at the enemy uh, and seeing if they can get more stuns, hooks, and death from above. But yes, going into the second stage of bans, Red Side gets a first ban, Heimerdinger ban. So what's left on the side of the teams it's going to be the solo laners for the side of blue for team sirachi seraph as well as i believe the support yeah it's going to be the support and either a jungler or a mid laner because that diana can flex to jungle but can also play mid lane if they so wish to choose so that is a bit of a flex pick but they're going to be banning around banning away the a soul just in case and Yatsuki is going to be banning the Oriana as well. Ooh, a Jack spam. Will K -A KKHR play the Yone flex once again? We'll find out. It is going to be playing an Aatrox, a Karma mid. So that's something Sirachi actually played last game. So like might be another comfort pick. There goes the cast in and hover. We'll see if Sirachi actually plays that. They were joking around how Sarashi just bought Kaisa's dad. Whether it is lore or not, I do not remember, but Cassidy is a hover right now. Would it be a bad pick? Vameshan, you guys got this. Well, there you go. There's some supporters in the chat. So there's... Cassidy is locked in. Camille locked in as well. So that's going to be the solo laners. Camille, good split pusher. Um, relatively high mid tier for that. But against an Aatrox, both laners are going to have their work cut out. Because Camille, not necessarily going to be able to get out as if Aatrox lands one knockup. If she doesn't have that uh, that hook uh, later, we'll see if there it is. And it's going to be a Rek'Sai jungle, I believe. Rek'Sai looking real good right now. But 
we're gonna see what happens in this game it's the broken rexai yes it is the broken rexai We'll see because they can flex all of these champions, Aatrox, Rexha, and Diana between mid, jungle, and top. So I've I've played personally against a Rexai top. It did uh, not go pretty for myself as I wasn't quite aware in the matchup. And Aatrox could go mid lane for all that matters. Throwing Diana in jungle, they have a lot of flex options. Uh, so we're going to see what they decide to do with it. But yeah, champion select is going to be finished. They are going to be loading some game, but there, as you may know, there is going to be the three minute game delay. Neon, you're hot. Island, Zaddy, you're hot. Island, smoking and blazing. Sheesh. All right, but now let's change the music a bit. Let's get into that pre-game discussion. Who won this draft? See, the question is, who won this draft? Both these teams have their own strengths and weaknesses. I feel like Team Sorachi has a huge late game. You're absolutely right, Nash Dog. Cassidy and Camille will absolutely outscale anything that Team Vo uh, Volatility Yatoski has. Cassidy, probably the best late game scaling, one of the best non ad carry champions that scale into late game cassidy and you charge that ultimate up you can just 100 to zero anyone that isn't a tank and if they are a tank maybe two or three rotations and bam they're dead camille rough early game great late game can also if played correctly can absolutely win a 1v1 situation neela neela is a bit of an interesting pick here not sem semi ranged as an ad carry technically melee but the thing with Jin and i believe it is going to be karma support the Karma Shield isn't going to be protecting against the Pike. There isn't going to be as much healing um, from the lane, even though Pike does heal himself with the gray health that might help with the Neela passive. So what's going to be important there is how they utilize that passive in the lane, because there is going to be a lot of poke coming out of Karma and Jin getting a little bit of free shots. I would say free shots. I would say one in every eight. This is going to be a hard matchup to play around if they decide to go all in. And if I read the stats correctly from last game, Satame on the Fiddlesticks, absolutely putting an influence as the Fiddlesticks jungle. Sorachi Gaming, Alados, thank you for the... Welcome to the chat. But yes, but let's let's look on the bright side and the pros out of Team Yotoski. Karma, Diana, Jin, Aatrox, Rek'Sai. They actually have a lot of C close range CC. They have the Karma Root, Diana Multiman Knockup, Jin Long Range W, and even the Curtain Call. Aatrox, you obviously know about his Q, the Triple Knockup, and even the Chains. And the Rek'Sai Knockup. And if they get away, they, they have the Rek'Sai Ultimate. And the Fury of the Sands will chase you down. But will they be able to use their early game advantage to get them to that point? With that said, Rek'Sai should have a lot of sustain in lane with the passive. Aatrox, if they get the trade with Camille, with Camille passive. There's going to be a lot, a lot of micro interaction in this game. And when, by the time it gets to 10 minutes, we'll see who can push their advantage to the mid game. Yeah, the sustain and mitigation, absolutely right, Nash. But if they, if they can get to that point, you know, if Cassidy gets rolling early, that might spell doom and disaster. But we'll see going into game one a no, game one this is game three of the night for these teams hopefully the game does not bug out for like the fifth time amongst the co-casters slash spectators so we'll find out so please hold let's see if we get to load in looks like we are able to load in But I believe we are able to finally get into the game. Let's go ahead and load in. Wonderful. Three minutes into the game. Beautiful. So not much has happened. Let's get to the right scene. Let's make sure all the scoreboard is also updated correctly because I like it when it's organized. You can see the matchups properly. Oh, 
All right, so in the top lane, we're going to have KKHR on the Camille. Satame jungle. Where's Satame? Oops. <laughs> oh, it's all right. Make sure I get this correct. But first, before the introductions, here comes Bad Axes coming with a gank in top lane. It's going to get the three uh, Qs, auto attacks, and the E. But KKHR with full belief. But here comes Satame gonna go for the counter gank flashes for the q slow does get the heal but doesn't get the fear off here comes bad axes kkhmr is gonna flash forward with the w and get the first blood as well but without the flash katsu is just gonna potentially go for the outplay but the fear is huge taking a lot of minion damage ketsu with a sliver of hp kkhmr oh does not have the knock up ready the hook shot not just quite yet oh but a huge play by ketsu the reverse flash q absolutely outplaying kka HM hr in that Ken but will he be a little greedy and he does satame getting that that huge outplay getting greedy ketsu was feeling itself and gives up the free kill to satame walking up and getting feared and life stolen to death meanwhile in the mid extra ushi getting the solo kill getting a slight tower dive on sarashi so there's that early game pressure that would should be the cassid attacks but here comes uh, kkhr going for a lot of poke fairly even trade so far ketsu trying to push the advantage gets all three KKHR doesn't have hookshot, nor does they do they have the hookshot. So that's going to be a very greedy play. And that huge wave stacked in the turret, that's going to be a huge advantage going to Ketsu. Ketsu is now level 5 compared to KKHR, who I believe is only level 4. This is going to be absolutely huge for the top lane matchup, this Aatrox. But meanwhile, in the bottom lane, here we're going to see the difference. We haven't seen much action from this game this uh, thus far, but look at the CS difference. 38 to 25 and the wave is frozen this is the power of freezing the wave and not uh and be able to zone your uh opponents off this is going to be huge in favor of red side uh blue side actually extra ushi going for a trade on sirachi there should be no kill there fairly simple trade is able to get the level six level six power spike kkhr is able to catch up in a little xp but here comes satame going in fear slow sirachi is not level six they are not ready for the gank there isn't much follow-up but sirachi finally hits level six so that might be a mistiming of a gank there, getting a little too antsy to pull the trigger to help their teammate rose truck trying to go in versus forces the flash out of fur furry booty but here comes ketsu once more pulls out the ultimate to chase down kkhmr will he go for it kkmhr still in range uses the auto attack for the passive and isn't going to be much more than that so although i did miss the introductions kkhmr on camille top lane tatsume fiddle six jungle sirachi cassid in mid finding sunshine nila adc rose trucks on pike meanwhile on the blue side representing team yatoski ketsu top lane aatrox bad axes jungle rek'sai extra ushi mid lane diana and bot lane 80 carry furry booty supported by yatsuki themselves on karma but yeah so far let's look at the gold difference right now so it is about a 1k gold difference i would normally attribute that to the first blood gold in top lane but in fact because they both died in that trade and that frozen wave they're actually even most of this gold difference 700 coming out of the just the cs difference in bot lane so that's going to be huge it's absolutely getting but here comes satame extra ushi trying to go for a gank but satame just happens to be there i don't know if they were expecting it but they did call the rope extra ushi is going to get hooked is going to manage to go over miss dodge the stun but the knock up from the uh nila is going to stop that road truck's going to pick up that one doesn't even have level six yet doesn't even bother to use death from above that was going to be the auto attack and note this look at the item there is a huge gold advantage but neela and pike have yet to back they are still on their starting items of the doran shield and the steel cap so that was this cs advantage has not necessarily even been a trade advantage this is all just mind games and pressure So, we'll see. KKHR is able to catch up in XP. Still relatively even in gold. So, the trade there earlier isn't going to be able to 
uh, in kills isn't doing much. That solo kill under turret actually more or less evens up it, uh, the score or anything. Probably down probably half a bar, if not a quarter bar of HP. But other than Satame, Satame has been able to influence the game for Team Sirachi Seraph. 1-0-2. Right now, looking like the big difference maker. Ketsu looking for the play. Has the ultimate available. Lands a knockup. Let's see if KKHMR decides to go for the hook shot. Is able to go for it. Let's see if they use it. World Ender is going to be used. Chain KKHMR uses the ultimate to dodge the knockup. Ketsu goes for the reverse Q knockup once again. But there's no flash. No hook shot. Bad axes. This is going to be an easy ultimate for them. And that's going to be a cleanup for them. But here comes Satame. Crow Storm going in. Let's see if they're going to do anything. That's going to be a huge stun on the furry booty. Yatsuki. But here comes Satame taking the turret. Huge. Hours glass and a double kill going over to Ro uh, Rose Trox. Yatsuki gets the shutdown there. So not ideal, but it's going to be a two for one. Great dive in favor of Team uh, Seraph. Sirachi Seraph. But yeah, so it's actually going to end up a score. But that again, they're just going to be bullying this bot lane. Three kills onto this pike is going to be able to buy an item. Actually gets the Warhammer along with Serrated Dirk. The CS difference, let's look at the gold difference. Combined, looking at the pike, 3,000 on the pike, 3,600 total on the Neela. That They each have over 1,000 gold on their counterpart, which or nearly 1,000 gold on their counterpart, which is crazy, more like 900. But that's the main difference maker in this game so far. We'll see if Furry Booty and Yatsuki is able to uh, pick up, not pick up the pace, but play maybe a little bit safer. If not, let's say rather safe, but take a little bit more risk. They're playing a little too safe. They're giving up a lot of CS, a lot of gold, a lot of experience. They're going to fall behind at this point. Neela level 8, Furry Booty level 6, but here comes top lane. KKHMR, HR getting it again. Bad Axis doesn't get the second knockup, but Ketsu just going to get an auto attack onto that one. So right now, this is going to be a story of two sides of the map. Yatoski going to be playing off their top side, Aatrox, Rek'Sai. Meanwhile, Team Sraji Seraph going to be playing off their bot side jungle combo, Satan... Satame, Sunshine, and Roshock. It looks like they're going to look for another dive again. There is a ward this time. They used a fourth shot. Crow Storm, once again, they don't have it. But the Neela dive knockup is going to be huge. Satame and the death from above. But here comes Ketsu. Here is the, the difference between top lane and bot lane. A 3v1. Ketsu trying to get what, what he can with the world ender. Here comes Extra Ushi and the teleport by Sirachi themselves. Extra Ushi gets the kill onto Satami, so that's going to be one. Blast going over the wall, Sirachi back to safety, but they aren't out of the woods yet. In fact, they are still in the jungle. They're on a ward. Ketsu looking to not only just pressure, but just walk back to top lane. Meanwhile, Rose, uh, Rose Truck still in the pit is holding his own. Flashes gets a double stun. Are they going to go to safety? The Root by Jin isn't going to get it. Shutdown going over to Extra Ushi. So that's going to be a huge amount of gold going in favor of... Uh... Yeah. In favor of uh... Team Yatoski. Alright, let me make sure... A few bugs in the code for my script, but that's okay, guys. I apologize for that. All right. But yes, that now the gold is actually even exactly 21.8 to 21.8. So again, this is the difference between top side and bot side. But Bad Axe is trying to rectify the mistakes that were made. KKHMR, gonna get HR. I can't, why do I keep telling HMR? Um, getting caught out, not able to back. But the first Chem Drake was taken in spite of that. 13 minutes in. So, right now, because of the. Even with they have the bot lane difference, Team uh, Sarashi Seraph hasn't been able to play for the Dragons quite as often as they would. Um, they've only gotten the one, and it was way later.
but here comes extra Ushi is gonna get caught out finding uh, Sunshine is gonna use the ultimate to pull them back in the pike into the hook into the stun death from above shutdown that's gonna be huge not only with the shutdown gold but also the pike ultimate passive to get that extra 300 gold to share with their team that is gonna be a huge amount of gold that went from an even game to 1000 but here comes Satame gonna use the crow storm to try and even it out in top lane Ketsu has to flash out to safety using the blast code and is gonna flash to safety they do look like they want to chase hookshot isn't gonna be enough the range and they don't have enough oh but the pullback in the hex <laughs> hexagonal uh ultimate kkhr is gonna get that one surprise i believe ketsu was surprised that they were still chasing and the ultimate actually did prevent it thought he was gonna be over but he was still in the but the geometry of the map did not allow him to go there sorachi has to burn flash to safety didn't look like they had uh, enough confidence to get away from that uh, Rek'Sai, especially if they still had the knockup and the ultimate at hand. So, yeah, 2,000 gold lead in favor of Team Sirachi Seraph. So, it's going to be a very interesting game going forward. That's They got the two shutdowns, shutdowns that they were looking for on the solo laners. Uh, Extra Ushi had that shutdown gold along with Ketsu. So, surprisingly, they did have a shutdown um because they didn't it's not like extra ushi was ahead in cs so we're actually down already in cs by a lot but here comes bad axes trying to get the gank onto kkhmr they land the one knock up and they land the second but ketsu has to use the world ender there is going to be the rexi ultimate little heal going out of the w out of camille but bad axes is going to pick that up and get the kill two five and one on that camille but here comes extra ushi trying to go all in on this uh cast it in but satame is there to go for the potential cleanup is not going to be enough fiddlesticks not necessarily known to go for solo kills even for a gank especially without crow storm so but here comes rose trucks just gonna slide right in invisible nearly point blank and says to extra ushi you thought you were safe not in my house six one and zero with a shutdown and the dusk blade in inventory and that's rostrox the masters player on team sirachi seraph looks like they are going to get the dragon on spawn after getting that uh, mid lane kill absolutely free for them with the bot lane and mid lane priority so right now now we're at 16 minutes to the game as uh you heard what i said earlier this is the most important part of the game right now they have two dragons they're up two and a half thousand gold and i believe they have gold on the right individuals it's okay if Cassidy's 0 and one but he's up they're up 40 cs ketsu is gonna get caught out gonna go 1v3 once more isn't gonna get it rose chalks kkhr and uh sorachi just gonna clean that up very easily ketsu had nowhere to go no flash doesn't even bother to use the ultimate for the move speed or the healing so right now this no longer becomes just a laning phase. Now this becomes a macro game. This is going to be how good of a macro because we're still, people would consider we're still in we're still in laning phase. There's only been one turret been taken, but a lot of the fights aren't even happening in lane anymore. Here's an example of that extra Ushi and Badass find, uh, finding sunshine. But here comes KKHMR, HR extra Ushi getting caught out, getting the ultimate plus the hook from Rose Shocks on the pike. Not gonna uh, let them escape. KKHR. Hook shots uses that crossover move across the wall. Ultimate coming out of Sunshine to grab them back once more. Huge CC chain, not even taking a major scratch for that matter. And that's going to be 13 3. They look to bust open this game wide open right now for these mid game skirmishes. KKHR looking for the dive on the bad axes, but here comes Fuzzy Booty. Oh, furry booty, I should say. So bad axes is still going to fall, but here's the difference in the bot lane damage. Yatsuki is gonna just get slapped by that water whip one two three and four for the Camille and that is gonna be a huge huge advantage going for team uh Sirachi Seraph an 8k gold lead at eight minutes this gold lead inflated about 4k in the last minute alone KKHR going for it Satame over the wall they don't know he's there but and they're just gonna burn furry booty is it gonna be a burn enough no but 
Extra Uchi has no way out. Doesn't bother the flash, especially with that uh, Camille on top of them. So that's going to be another kill over to the top lane and jungle duo of KKHR and Satame. Bad Axe is trying to follow. They know this uh, fail six doesn't have much, but he still does have the flash. Ketsu trying to push the advantage, but they, he has died quite a bit. World Ender is going to be used, but Road Shocks it there. It doesn't matter. He's going to go for the execute. They're trying to go for Satame. The fear, the knockup, the CC chain coming out of Sirachi Seraph. But death from above. Road Shocks wants more, and he isn't going to stop. Sirachi going in to clean up that one, and that is going to be a three for zero. Road Shocks wants more. Looking for the Blast Cone. But that is going to be a three for one. They are going to be able to push the top lane turret. They actually are looking to uh, pick that up quite soon, as well as Sunshine just pushing the mid lane. Again, this this gold lead is nearly going almost telegraphed 4K every minute and a half. Sirachi Seraph playing the game that they want to play, roaming as a team and being able to fight the fights they want, push their advantage. They're not doing anything super aggressive. Um, Rose Shocks does almost get caught out there, is able to dash out, but the healing coming out, finding Sunshine, just healing themselves together. And Bad Axes isn't going to be able to do anything with the ultimate. And Rose Shocks gets another shutdown. Nine, one, and five on this pike. But here comes Ketsu and the rest of Yatoski. But they aren't going to do it. Now they they feel so far ahead. They are just diving further and further. KKHR gets the double kill. Wants the ace right here, right now. Gets exhausted. Decides against it. But yeah, 20 minutes in. Only some of them have backed. If I look at the gold in the inventory, they, they backed once. And they all have some gold in the inventory but they're bot lane almost 2k gold um each so they're just managing to reset pick the fights and just push the pedal to the metal at the game the game at their own pace but here comes uh extra ushi looks like trying to go for a kill isn't gonna be enough the entire team of uh sirachi seraph is gonna be there got baited a little bit by fog of war no vision I would normally talk about Vision a little more, but here comes the Crossroom. They are going to force the fight once more. Sirachi over the wall, followed by the Pike. Sirachi is going to not die as well. And Rostrox getting then killed. That's going to be a 3 for 0 But here comes Finding Sunshine. An AD carry position higher level than the top lane Aatrox. You can just tell the difference. The flash over the wall to follow Finding Sunshine on a killing spree. The Gale Force to follow Bad Axes, Rek'Sai. This is a two level up. Uh, Neela, now we can see what Finding Sunshine is all about. It ain't just about the sunshine, it's about the rain. And what brings the rain? The pain. Here goes Bad Axes, just using the ultimate just to buy a little bit more time. But Sirachi Seraph just wants to kill. They don't even want Baron. They just want the dragon on the other side. If we can just look on the other side, Satame. Just taking that's the third dragon. They're at soul point. But does soul point even matter at this point? They are up 16,000 gold. Wow. Wow. That's just crazy, guys. To be honest, this isn't even a high macro game. This is just fight after fight with uh, Team Yatsuki not having vision. They're just pushing the advantage so fast that they there isn't much that they can do Swaji Seraph not knowing what the brakes are on this train but they're pushing confidently into the base look at them it's a it's a 5v3 in the base and they can't even bother to look for a fight this is what happens when you strong side top in season 13 We'll find out, but they are pushing the first Nexus turret. First Nexus turret is going to fall. It's going to be the last stand. If this is where they have to save their game, this they have to do it now. They are be able to get KKHR, so that's going to be the first. But Finding Sunshine nearly gets uh, Bad Axes. Bad Axes is going to fall, so... Oh, not going to fall. Double kill going over to the Neela, but is trying to look for the multi-kill as well. So that's going to so far be a 1 for 2 
Neela picking up one more triple kill for Finding Sunshine. The quadra kill for Finding Sunshine. And that's going to close out the game. I'm sure they were looking for the Penta. But this time, Team Sirachi Seraph is going to move out of Group A 3-0.